Welcome everyone. Well, uh, there are different types of differential equations and uh, for each type there are specific methods required to solve them. And uh, one such type is non-exact differential equations. In this lecture I will briefly discuss exact differential equations and then we'll move towards non-exact differential equations. Over here, uh, the general form of exact differential equations is given. In this general form, we have we have this function m of x, y. Basically, uh, this function depends on x and y variables along with dx plus another function n which also depends on x and y along with dy is equal to 0. Now, uh, if you come across such equations, such differential equations, you have to prove that uh, the partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to partial derivative of n with respect to x. If you see that uh, this condition gets satisfied, then you will uh, say that the given equation is an exact differential equation. So basically, this is the main condition required for an equation to be an exact differential equation. Here is an example of an exact differential equation. If you see this equation, we have along with dx, we have some function m. And you can see that uh, this function m basically depends on both x and y. Plus, we have this function n. This uh, depends on x only over here. Along with dy is equal to 0. This equation is an exact differential equation or not, we need to check and uh, first of all we have to identify that what are the functions m and n. Well, as you can see over here, this was m, so m is equal to 2xy and this is n, so n is equal to x squared minus 1. Now what I will do? I will take the partial derivative of m with respect to y and partial derivative of n with respect to x and I will get this answer 2x. As you can see that uh, the answer is same in both the cases so I can easily say that that this is an exact differential equation. What does it mean if condition is not getting satisfied? Well this means that the equation is non-exact and uh, in this scenario what we can do is we need to make it exact. So in this lecture I will discuss the method that is required to make a non-exact equation exact. So let's begin. So here we will start with a given differential equation. The general form is given over here and uh, suppose that uh, we know that this equation is non-exact and now we need to make it exact. So first of all I need to find out my. Basically my is equal to partial derivative of m with respect to y and nx is equal to partial derivative of n with respect to x. Now I need to find out this function which is basically my minus nx by n. So if after finding it out I see that this is a function of x alone, x alone, then the integrating factor can be computed using following formula. Well, uh, Integrating factor, as you know that uh, when we are dealing with linear differential equations, we need to find out integrating factor and then we multiply the integrating factor with the differential equation and uh, then the procedure proceeds. But here also in order to make a non-exact differential equation exact, I need to find out an integrating factor but here the procedure for finding it out is a little bit different. So for finding it out, I have to check that if this function, which I'm highlighting over here, if this function 
comes out to be a function of x alone then I will apply this equation to find out the integrating factor which is basically exponential with power of this function that is m by minus nx over n. Now suppose that uh, in the previous case when we were computing integrating factor suppose that the integrating factor is not a function of x alone and it depends upon both x and y then in that case what to do? Well what we will do is we will again compute another function and that is basically nx minus my by m this function. So we will check if this is a function of y alone then we will again compute an integrating factor and this time the integrating factor will be with exponential integral of nx minus my by m and this will if this is the function of y alone then we will finalize that this will be our integrating factor that we will use to multiply the differential equation to make it exact. So now we will make use of the integrating factor. What we will do is we will multiply the given differential equation which was uh, originally non-exact. We will multiply that differential equation with the integrating factor that we had computed in the previous slides. We will make use of that integrating factor which was purely a function of either x or y. And uh, here we have shown that it depends on both x and y but we can have uh, either the function integrating factor that purely depends on x or on y. We will just make use of one integrating factor like either the one which was uh, computed with x alone or the one in which we uh, had just y. Once we uh, are done with that, what we will do is now we need to make sure that uh, the equation that was uh, originally non-exact, now it is exact. And what I will do, just the way I used to do earlier for exact differential equations, I will take the partial derivative of this whole term with respect to y and I will take the partial derivative of this whole part nxy along with the integrating factor and take its partial derivative with respect to x and then check whether the two are equal or not. So here will be the condition. And if this condition gets proved then this means that we have turned the non-exact equation into an exact equation. Let's start an example cos of x dx plus 1 plus 2 by y into sine of x dy is equal to 0. This differential equation is given to us so first we need to check whether uh, it is exact or not. Okay so this part cos of x makes basically m and uh, all the part along with dy is n. So first I will identify that. After that I will compute m by. These subscripts basically shows that I'm taking the partial derivative of m with respect to y and n with a subscript x shows partial derivative of n with respect to x. I will take the partial derivatives and find out their answers. As you can see that uh, these two partial derivatives are not equal to one another. They are different. So the step one will be to find out the function m by minus nx by n. I will find it out and uh, as you can see that the answer comes out to be minus cot of x. Minus cot of x as you can see that it is purely a function of x so there is no need to find out uh, the other function that I showed you earlier. So I will make use of uh, this function m by minus nx by n to compute the integrating factor. So this time the integrating factor will be a purely a function of x. Now to compute that uh, I will take uh, the integral of minus cot of x and what I will get in the end steps are all steps are shown over here and you will get cosecant of x. The next step is to multiply the integrating factor with the given differential equation. 
So this was the step. Now how we will apply that step over here. We got uh, cosecant of x which is basically equal to 1 by sine x. I will multiply uh, the given differential equation with uh, 1 by sine of x and this I will get. I will cancel out sine of x from uh, this uh, end part and afterwards what I will get cot of x dx plus 1 plus 2 by y into dy is equal to 0. So uh, now the time has come to prove that uh, whether the equation uh, is turned from non-exact to exact or not. So again take the partial derivative of m. So when I will take the partial derivative of m with respect to y I will get 0 obviously because cot it m is a function of x and I am taking the partial derivative with respect to y so I will get 0. nxy is equal to 1 plus 2 by y and here also because I have to take uh, the partial derivative with respect to x and there is no term over here which basically comprises of uh, x so I will get 0 over here. Uh, this is our new exact differential equation that we obtained in step 3 and uh, our new m and n will be cot of x and 1 plus 2 by y respectively. Now it's time to compute the general solution of the given differential equation and for that I will take the integral of m dx plus integral of terms in n free from x to dy is equal to c. c is basically a constant. Now m was uh, basically cot of x so I will write it over here. There are no terms over here um, in m that uh, have y in it so there is no problem over here otherwise we treat y as a constant and as far as n is concerned the condition is that the terms in n that are free from x. When you are taking the integral over here you treat you in, in fact consider only those terms that do not consist of x. As you can see over here we have no term that consists of x over here. So 1 plus 2 by y into dy is equal to c and you will compute the integral and your answer should be equal to y plus 2 natural log of y plus natural log of sine of x is equal to c. I hope uh, non-exact differential equations are clear to you but if you have any questions you can post it over here. Thank you.